everyone. Welcome to RPV City Talk Special Sheriff's Report Edition. It's great to have here in studio the Lomita Sheriff Captain James Powers. Great to have you here to give us an update on everything happening in terms of law enforcement efforts in our community. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. It's, my it's pleasure. great to have you here. And I know you've been captain now at Lomita for a uh, little over six months on the job. Are things going like you want and not just sort of what you're accomplishing so far? I'd be interested in that. I'm actually having a great time. Uh, <laughs> new experience for me. I walked into a, a, a wonderful assignment and pleasantly surprised with, with everything I've got. And so, you know, as far as like coming in and making any new changes and stuff like that, uh, I was reluctant to do so. And, and I basically told myself that I would only have to, you know, change what I felt needed to be changed. Mm -hmm. And there really wasn't, you know, just a few little minor adjustments here and there, but everything seems to be running very well. And like I said, I'm, I'm very happy. And great to be in charge of the, keeping the peninsula safe. You've had 31 years in law enforcement, you said, with the Sheriff's Department, so you're bringing a lot with you here. Yes, 31 Excellent. years. All right. Well, last time we caught up together, you were at the Palos Fortes Peninsula Regional Law Committee meeting that's held in Rolling Hills. And you give your quarterly update on just the crime stats and what we're seeing for trends um, here on the Hill, but also right here in Rancho Palos Verdes. So I think you had good news overall, right? Crime, we're seeing it go down overall. Yes, overall, yeah. crime is down a little <laughs> for bit, the quarter. but but I've still got some concerns that I don't like, and, okay. and I'm you know I'm very passionate about that, and I want to I want to do my best and ensure that the quality of life in, in, on the peninsula and in your city as well is compatible and, and, and acceptable. Yeah, so can you talk a little bit about what you what you brought up in front of regional law at that meeting? Sort of highlight some of what the numbers were showing for you know I think mostly what people are worrying about are the burglaries, for example, and obviously any kind of major crime like that. So typically, the community's number one priority or number one concern or complaint is, is usually traffic related. But when I walked in here, when I arrived last June, I saw that uh, there were some concerns with residential burglary, vehicle burglaries, and, and overall thefts in general. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I, I wish I could just eradicate completely, but it's just not a reality. So I, I paid special attention to that. And what I presented last week at the original law uh, was that, in fact, that I, I saw some numbers in Rancho Palos Verdes where the residential burglaries was higher this last year in the last quarter okay. than it was in the year prior. And that's a concern of mine. Overall, when I was monitoring stuff, and for our year-to-date numbers, they're actually down. And, and so one could argue that it's the holiday season. But I, I don't like to make excuses, and I, I like to analyze things, and I work very closely with our crime analyst to look for any patterns or trends that we can identify. Right, and I think at that regional law meeting, one of the trends that was mentioned, or at least a couple, was you're seeing um, possibly the situation where burglars are occurring, where people are on vac long vacations, they might be posting on Facebook that they're out of town having a great time and their house is sitting there empty, right? I don't know if that is a concern. Um, and also um, that residents were also that are being targeted, like it was, oh, oh, there's construction going on in their home as well. Are you seeing those trends? That's something that I identified. <laughs> and, and so we, we have a mapping system that we use that I, I access on a regular basis. And it's kind of the old traditional pin maps that you would see back in the 70s on TV shows. Uh, now it's electronic. And so one thing that I was looking at is um, from attending city council meetings and being aware of what's going on, I recognize that some burglaries had occurred uh, directly next door to a home that was having uh, some some major construction going on and I thought that was kind of unique and so I, I looked at some of the other uh, burglaries that had taken place to see if there's any similar patterns which I did recognize that um, and you bring up a good point and it came up last week as well when people advertise on social media um, you, you know where they're at. We're across uh, the world. No we're at my house. No. We're having dinner at a certain restaurant, and then they show the pictures of their food. Uh, we're on vacation. We're in the airport getting ready to go to Europe. We're, get, you know, we're going to Hawaii, whatever. Maybe people post that stuff, and there's other people that have access to your, to your Facebook page, whether it's directly as a connection to you or, or a, a, another party. And unfortunately, that, uh, in our society, people prey on that stuff. Right. And so you're basically telling if so you're telling the, the burglar if he or she is looking at that, hey, we're out of town. It's almost like an invitation to come and break into my home. Right. Um, and then you have people that travel uh, for long, you know, long periods of time. And what I suggest is one, you can ask the station for patrol checks, uh, but two, so let call your, a station and ask for that service. Yes, okay. it, but more importantly. Let friends and relatives know that you're going to be out of town and have somebody watch your house for you. Mm -hmm. Have somebody come and collect the mail. Have, you know, whatever it may be, you know, put your lights on timers. There's all kinds of different things that you can do to, to indicate that you might be home and to, to, to distract that or to deter the potential uh, 
And again, what about the trend about possibly seeing houses under construction in the community? Are they targeted more? Uh, yes and no. It's not necessarily, in, in the situation I saw, it wasn't the house that was under construction that got bro broken into. It was a house next door. And, and you know, okay. your first thought would be, all right, are the contractors doing it? And not necessarily so. I think sometimes they subcontract and sometimes they subcontract to, to haul stuff away or whatnot. And people talk, people communicate. Um, you know, the real estate up here is prime real estate. The quality of life is very, very good. And it's, unfortunately, that's target rich. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's a selling point. I mean, it's just, it is for, for, the, for the burglars. And, and there's not a whole lot you can do about that, except um, just take precautions before you go. Right. I want to go back to the regional law committee meeting that meets quarterly in the community. To, for residents that are watching that might under, understand the makeup of the committee, and I want to give a shout out to our mayor pro tem, Eric Allegria, who now chairs this regional law committee meeting. Just sort of explain the makeup, the role, what they do, and how you interact with, with the sheriff's station. So there's two council members from each city. Uh, Rolling Hills, Rolling Hills Estates, and Rancho Palos Verdes. And those three cities on the hill, PVE is excluded technically because they're not part of contract with the Sheriff's Department, so people understand that, right? Correct. Palos Verdes Estates has their own police department, right. so they're not part of that. But these three cities right. all contract with the Sheriff's Department, and they share their contract and their expenses. And so when it comes to when they purchase uh, deputy sheriff items or uh, detective items, sometimes they split them and share them. Right. And that's kind of how they oversee making sure that they're all getting their best bang for their buck. And, and it shows accountability on our part and on their part as well. And so whenever something comes up, for example, the school resource officer example came up, they all contributed to that in addition to some other people in, in areas that also contributed to that as well. And so it, it's kind of like their own little internal audit of that. And so whenever something is proposed, uh, like an expense, for example, like the school resource officers, they look at it and they review it and they they vote on it. It's almost like a city council within for the peninsula, so to speak. And, and they and they rotate through. And they're addressing public safety issues for the entire for the peninsula. Um, you mentioned school resource officers at that um, last community meeting. Um, the two resource officers, which are um, which everyone's a lot familiar with, uh, Dave Roses, who was with the sheriff's department in Lameda for many years, is now back. And um, you also have is it Stephen Moses? Who Steve you, Moses. Steve yes. Moses. There are two. SROs or school resource officers. So explain what they do now that they're out there and um, they're going to Peninsula High and PV High, I believe. Can you kind of explain what, what they're all about? They're going to those and I believe they're going to some intermediate schools okay, as well. So and, and so what are they doing? prior to my arrival, uh, there was an, uh, an interest and a concern for to have a, a school resource officer. And it's with everything going on in society, in, with, all the, with, with all the what's school what's violence and school. the threats and everything else, it is a reality. It's an unfortunate reality. And, uh, you know, it's a precautionary measure to have somebody there. And um, I don't know Rosas, but I just met him. I mm -hmm. actually was part of that interview process, and I got to sit in on the panel. Steve Moses, I've known. I've worked with him my entire career. And so both of them are both retired sergeants from the Sheriff's Department. And so they, they come with a lot of expertise, a lot of education, and a lot of knowledge. And uh, what their role is is to be present, is to be available to be a resource for the students, the faculty, and the parents of the students. Mm -hmm. And in, in the presentation we saw last week, it sounds like they're, they're hitting that and they've, they've, they've uh, taken that role uh, very seriously and very effectively. And those uh, two positions and, are funded by, the, you say this, the cities are sharing that cost with the school district as yes. well. Yes. So And so we'll see how, effect, I'm sure, they're, like you say, they're being super effective and being able to be there and, and, and really for prevention um, Correct. with these kids. And, and as, they, as they noted, you know, as far as, oh, there was a lot, a lot of questions that had come up as far as how they gather information and what's a typical day like. Uh, and, and you saw it, you know, they start off with, uh, with doing some traffic enforcement or traffic, you know, traffic control, so to speak, right. uh, greeting the students as they arrive, acknowledging the parents leave and the, and the students get out of the car, uh, and then with the faculty and, and their typical day throughout the school, and then what they do when information is provided. And, and there was some concern about you know, how they gather that and where they get it from and, you know, what sources they use. And it's, it's really the, the best source is, is very effective communication. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what they're doing. Right. One thing I found interesting in the conversation about what, how these um, uh, school resource officers can be super effective in um, keeping kids safe on campus, like take social media at the school district. 
representative was saying, you know, we can't legally monitor social media of these students, but often we see what's happening in society. Students are posting, I want to go in and blow up a school. But your resource officers are able to kind of work with that information, which is great. Correct. So. Yeah, and, and trying to manage the social media of every student <laughs> in a school, it's, it's, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. And so you have to rely on communication. And, and fortunately, um, you, you know, People are doing the right thing. You know, you go back to see something, say something. That's that's actually taking place, and it's very, very beneficial to us. Excellent. Um, I want to talk about when you did your report about to sort of what you to break it up into a type one and type two crimes, um, with bur residential burglaries um, being type one. Um, then you also looking at traffic violations, which yes. we were talking about. That's obviously a huge concern. I know for residents, they're just you know they're concerned about if they're getting speeding tickets, but also just keeping everybody safe out there. What are you seeing with traffic violations? I was noticed that they were you're seeing the number of DUIs have gone up on the hill. Is that correct? Yes. So that's that's very concerning. Absolutely. And, and so um, the part one and part two crimes, yeah, part one crimes are, are your your serious felony crimes. Part two crimes are your uh, not so serious. Uh, they're nonviolent crimes. Um, and misdemeanor crimes. Mm -hmm. And then you get into traffic. And so we look at hazardous citations, non-hazardous citations, and then parking citations. And then we also look at our response times. And what I've seen is um, a, a dro actual uh, drop in our issuance of citations, uh, which is a, something that I, a concern of mine, because the traffic incidents of uh, injury tra traffic collisions and DUI collisions and fatal collisions uh, are always a concern of mine. And so I don't have the year-to-date stats as far as whether or not those are up or down, but I did see an, an increase in certain areas of injury collisions in certain cities and, and DUI, mm -hmm. uh, DUIs with DUI collisions. And so those are, those are always a concern. And being the last three months of the year, you got the holidays. Whether or not that's a contributing factor, I don't know. Uh, but I, I do know that we did have two fatalities. In Rancho Palos Verdes. Yes. In 2019. Correct. Right? Yes. And, and those are a concern. And one was, well, they're both speed related. Um, so they were they alcohol related or just speed related for those two fatalities? Are you sure? One was a hit and run. And I, so I don't know if that right. was alcohol related. I would, I, I, I don't know. Right. Uh, um, I would maybe distractions like texting, mm -hmm. uh, those are typical. I, I don't have the facts on that right. one as far as because the, the person's not in custody. So we, that case is still ongoing. Uh, the other one, uh, the, the driver that was driving uh, at a speed that was probably too fast uh, caused him to, to drift on the wrong side of the road, which mm -hmm. caused and the that collision. was PV Drive East, the second one? The switchbacks, yes. Yeah. And, and so, um, yeah, it was speed. And, and that, the facts, where, uh, the collision were there because mm -hmm. we went out there and investigated that. So when you look at those two situations, those tragedies of fatalities, those would have been avoided if people were just obviously not speeding. Um, I, the the one on the switchbacks, definitely. Mm -hmm. And whether or not there was, I, I, I don't know if there was any um, alcohol or drugs involved in that because it's uh, the coroner's case hasn't been concluded yet. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the other one that was a hit and run, um, it's quite possible, but I don't know. Uh, I, right. I do believe maybe there are some inattention or some distractions that maybe contributed to that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Now, also during the regional lawmaking, we were talking about traffic s scenarios because there's all this um, construction happening with um, Cal Water. There was some concerns brought up about people, you know, um, being confused about what they're doing on the roads and all of that. Any, anything you want to tell the community, obviously, just be aware and pay attention. Like you're in kind of construction zone, so there's been concern about that. Absolutely. The... Um, there's the speed limit is 25 in those zones, and it's that for a reason. And mm -hmm. I know that people are wanting to get to point A to point B. I understand that. Uh, that's that's just the realities of life. But knowing that that area is under construction and knowing what to expect, um, you're going to need to plan ahead a, a little earlier, leave a little earlier, um, so you can drive a little safer. There there have been situations where, uh, yeah, they move the signs around because they're doing different things. And uh, if you're not driving a, at a a slower speed, so to speak, you may miss those signs, right. thinking that it's the same sign that was up there the last time you got. Um, and so the last thing we want is another collision because of that. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're moving forward with that. Uh, hopefully they'll be done soon. I know, because uh, I know everybody's frustrated about trying to just get around this peninsula. It's not like there's alternative routes, really, if you're trying to either get down Crenshaw or Hawthorne or get around the peninsula. So 
got to give yourself extra time. Absolutely. Um, moving on, um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how your department is making what you feel like great strides in solving cases that are coming your way. Anything you want to talk about accomplishments that way or that you can brag about that you guys are doing? No. Well, Lomita Station is going through um, a growth change where we're seeing um, a lot of our experienced, tenured folks retire, promote, or transfer to assignments that are just closer to home because of, the, uh, because of their commute. Um, and so with that being said, I've got a lot of younger deputies coming right out of the jails, and um, they're, they're on training and they're learning. So they, they've, they don't have the experience as the more tenured deputies are. But on the flip side of that, they're making arrests. And I'm really, really impressed with that. And they're doing a phenomenal job of going out there and, and still looking for the bad guy. They're stopping people, and they're enforcing the laws. And with that comes the experience. And so they're, that experience is growing and growing and growing. As far as um, crimes being solved, like I said earlier, uh, one of my biggest focuses is residential burglaries and vehicle burglaries. And I can tell you, up in the peninsula and in I know Rancho Palos Verdes, there's probably at least three or four of them that I can speak of where we've actually caught residential burglars in the act or just after the act occurred, which is very, very rare in law enforcement. Wow. And, and I, I give kudos to the people that called, which are members of the community, that when they saw something, they said something. And, and I, I cannot express the importance of that and how valuable that is. Uh, and the diligence of my deputies to be able to, to get the you know be in the right place at the right time and get there, and and apprehend these folks, and that's that's probably the biggest success story mm -hmm. that I, I can I, I can say. And um, like I said, we've I know there's been at least five or six of those, and I believe three or four of them have been in Retro Palace Verdes. Right. Well, the good news is since you take a look at the numbers since like 2015, <clears throat> we had so many burglaries happening, and, and the problem and it's they've come way down. I know that our city council and RPV has sort of challenged to see a 20% reduction last year, and I think we're all happy that the numbers are going down. But when we can never have any, that would be great. Um, and we bring up the fact about like you know when you see something, say something. You've said that a few times, and that's the campaign that we want to keep saying because it takes the community really, everyone's eyes and ears watching. It really helps you out a lot, right, in law enforcement and solving and prevention. Absolutely. And, you, you know, in the very beginning, I, I talked about making minor adjustments and minor changes. And one of the first changes uh, that I made uh, was with my desk. And I want them to dispatch calls for service for any call. Oh, wow. Um, and I got a little pushback on that because, you know, there's there can be some sarcasm. You know, well, what if they call me to come wash my car. I'm like, okay, let's be a realistic. I don't think anyone's ever said that. Right. And I hope nobody, you know, after watching this, I hope you don't call the station and ask for that because we're not going to come wash your car. I'm, I'm being uh, on a more realistic uh, level here as far as what our job is and what our role is. And uh, w with that being said, uh, you know, I want to make sure that, that we deliver that service and that we send the cars out mm -hmm. uh, and, and do what needs to be done. And so by doing that, I want my deputies go out and meet members of the community mm -hmm. and establish those relationships and those partnerships because that's foundational. And, and by doing that, I want the community to get to know who all of our deputies are. Right. And, and, so, and as time goes on, you know, that, that will work very, very well. Um, and, and so that's, that's a, the, the first step about it. Um, but We have a very active neighborhood watch in RPV, which is, is fabulous. Every community, almost most neighborhoods, I think, have one. And... Mm -hmm. um, so it's important to check in with you all. No, it's very, it's, it's very important. And, and one of the things that I've noticed, and I've, I noticed this years and years ago when I was a deputy work, working in patrol, and it was actually one of my very first neighborhood watch meetings that I had attended. And I was there to field any questions or any gripes that somebody might have. And so I was all prepared to talk about response times and, right. and, 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 and different things. But what was interesting is uh, I had uh, a resident raise her hand and just kind of let me have it a little bit <clears throat> with some behavior that was going on in the neighborhood and the fact that some people were parking in front of their house and they were using narcotics in the car. And I asked, I said, well, did you call the sheriff's station and report it? No. And they asked, well, why didn't you call? And they said, well, I didn't want to waste your time. And I said, but that's what my job is. And so I, I said, please waste my time. That's my job. Call. Because if I'm just driving down the street and I see two people sitting in a car, right. I don't have a legal reason to just detain them. 
I mean, I could probably work around and, and, and introduce myself to them, but if a resident calls and says, hey, this is what I see, and it's suspicious behavior or it's illegal activity, and we type the call in and we send the car out there, that gives us a reason to make contact with those folks. Mm -hmm. And if, if trust me, if, if there's somebody sitting in your neighborhood and they're doing drugs, they're doing a little bit more than that. Right. And that's, those are the folks that we need to deal with and address and deal with it. But people, I guess, like you say, do are reluctant to report sometimes because they think maybe I'm just, you know, maybe this really, you know, why am I imagining this or, you know, but when you, you kind of go with that little person inside you sometimes. I know I've called in when I've seen cars that I've never seen in my neighborhood hanging out and it doesn't hurt and you guys are great. The patrol car will come down and just kind of check it out. So it's really important to do that. Um, and other ways that residents get involved, we were talking before about how can we secure our own properties to not become a victim, you know, even just having a home security system. I know that our city's working to encourage residents to do the ring program. Mm -hmm. There's an incentive program that's kicking in so you can get a ring camera and uh, you can check it out by calling City Hall about how that's going to work for discounts. What do you think about that? Does that help? Yes. And, and it helps you solve crime? The camera systems in itself, um, no matter what brand it is, they're effective. Anything is effective uh, as far as that's concerned. As far as other precautions, alarms, locks, locking your windows, keeping your doors locked, keeping your windows closed. Um, you know, the, the camera systems, I told you that we had solved some residential burglaries. One of them was because of a camera system that was installed in that house. And so that gave us a perfect shot with a description of the suspect. Which is, which is what allowed us to catch him mm -hmm. um, because of the vehicle, uh, the clothing description that he had on. So it's worth it to get those. Also, the Cadillac of camera systems is our ALPR, um, automated license plate readers, that are all over the peninsula, including from Palos Verdes States on. Um, talk about how that program is going and expanding and helpful. How's that going? That program is very, <laughs> hel very helpful. And not only does it catch vehicles as they're coming and going, we can utilize those systems and it's catching um, the vehicles, by the way, that are maybe stolen or any vehicle that's wanted. So, so what it reads, yes, it, it, it reads, yeah, it, it, it captures any car that's wanted. Uh, we focus on the, the serious crimes, uh, the stolen vehicles, uh, felony crimes, missing persons. Um, but we can use that system as an investigative tool as well. Uh, and so it's, 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 uh, it, it's got more benefits than just capturing the license plates. Mm -hmm. And it is effective. But we're putting more cameras up right around the hill. It's very effective. Yeah. And, and, you know, this city and this community, is not, they're, they're not alone. Um, they're, I mean, they're, they're all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of first stages throughout the state, throughout the country are utilizing these, these systems. Um, right. And they're very, very effective. When you look at the tools that you have and the resources, I'm sure you can always use more, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Your department. I know our city in Reggie Palos Verdes, um, the city council has really upped to the budget for public safety and including to have extra patrols. Can you talk a little bit about how our own city in Reggie Palos Verdes has additional resources to help you and help us stay safe? Absolutely. So in addition to um, just the, the deputies working in the, in the radio cars, handling call officer service, they have uh, the community resource deputies or the core team, uh, which is uh, three deputies and a sergeant. They have a motor officer that the, is contracted that goes out and enforces traffic laws uh, above and beyond. And they actually have some uh, a budget set aside above and beyond the regular contract for additional traffic enforcement. Uh, they have uh, the, pre the preserve deputies, which have been in effect but are phasing out because they're being replaced with the, the rangers that the city okay. hired. And so I have got one deputy left that's acting kind of as a mentor and uh, giving the, the ranger deputy, the ranger officers um, some, uh, I guess, just tips and, and pointers and, and just some guidance. And we'll continue that okay. uh, and, and be a resource as that for, for uh, a significant period of time. Um, and then we have the burglary suppression team, which are a team of detectives, which is one of those things that's shared by all of the cities in the peninsula. And they, they're they focusing on residential burglaries, vehicle burglaries, and they're very, very effective. Mm -hmm. And um, they're, they're probably the team that I speak to the most because of my concerns and my passion for burglary. Well, as we see the numbers, although they shift from every, you know, numbers can tell you what you want, but overall I think that we're seeing numbers, like you were saying, go down. That's a good thing. Your team's doing a great job out there. Um, now that you're on board, and we only have about a few minutes left, I want to just hear more about your t goals for this year. You've got a lot on your plate, and patrolling the peninsula has its challenges. 
So my goals, <laughs> um, my, my goals are to eradicate crime in, in, in its entirety. Um, but I know that's not realistic, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I wish it was. And I think I said it not this last regional law meeting, but the one before that, that um, if I could do that, I'd be a much higher rank than I am right now. Um, but my goals are uh, to continue our service. Uh, I initially did not implement major change at the station. And I, I had an action plan. I was prepared to go. And so what I did just last week, I had a staff meeting with my all of my supervisors, sergeants and lieutenants, and my in-house managers. And I presented my action plan to them. And I wanted feedback from them. And so there's a program that, um, that I used years and years ago. And they, it was developed as an acronym. And it's, it's called PAVE. And it stands for Partnership, Accountability, Visibility, and Enforcement. And so what I want is I want my deputies to go out and meet members of the committee. So don't just drive down the street. I want them to stop and talk to somebody. Not just drive through a strip mall. I want them to get out and meet a business owner or a store manager. And I want mm -hmm. them to communicate and introduce themselves and create those relationships and those partnerships. And with that line of communication, it'll just expand further. And so that's that's one of my goals. It's um, like I said, I, I delivered it last week. Mm -hmm. I'll fine tune it. And uh, it went to all of my supervisors because it's got to come from the top down. Mm -hmm. And so with that, my goal is to, to keep the crime rate down. And if I can lower it, greater, mm -hmm. uh, perfect. Uh, and just increase the relationships with the community and okay. to provide a, a quality service to you. So what are you enjoying most now about being on the job here? You've had so many years in law enforcement. You know, just being able to, to, to do what I just did and, and to, to lead an entire crew uh, and to help develop them to replace me when I leave. And mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. And it's, it's really a, a, a form of leadership. And one last thing is we all heard in the last year or two from the prior captains about just your staffing and the whole sheriff's department in LA is having issues just to keep, to have all those vacancies filled. Are you good? I'm getting there. Good. Um, I, I, I arrived with uh, a lot of vacancies. My deputy vacancies are almost full. And I, I have, I have a, a, a high number of trainees right now and I don't want any more because I want to get them trained in, a, in a, a most effective way. I just got three new sergeants. I need a few more. Mm -hmm. My lieutenant staffing is up to par, but I am gonna I am gonna ask for more. And how about a shout out for volunteers from Rancho Palos Verdes and Palos Verdes? You guys have volunteers on patrol of that you want to encourage that too. I'm sure. My volunteers are awesome, and, <laughs> and they're worth their weight in gold. And uh, I, I I welcome more. They're at more. your front desk, even right? You've yes, they are. Over. Oh, they they they're you'd be amazed at what they're doing. They they're even they're helping with our weapons training. They're helping in, in the station. They're uh, you know delivering stuff downtown. And if people want to get involved, just call the station. Is that the best way to get, yes, find out the opportunities? It, it, you just call the station and we'll direct them. It's going to be through our, our, our core team. Okay. And they'll get them all started and, and get them on their way. Well, that's excellent. Well, I so appreciate you taking time out. And we're going to have you in here again in, in the next quarter's report. Any, any last thing you want to say that I didn't think to ask you, but I think we've covered a bit. And no, I just want to thank you. I, and, and out to the community, if you see something, please call us and let us address it. All right. If it's nothing, that's okay. But if it's something, that's even better. All right. Captain James Power, thanks for keeping us safe. That'll do it for this edition of RPV City Talk. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Thanks for watching. See you next time.